Um, I am a product of California's public education system. I attended state-funded schools, and I have worked most of my adult life at the University of California at Berkeley, where I graduated in ethnic studies. My job is the assistant registrar at Bolt School of Law, and my job is to make sure that people graduate and that classes are scheduled. Um, like other public employees, I am entrusted with ensuring that the public's money is being used for public services. However, my job is getting harder and harder. The garbage in my office gets picked up once a month because the university has prioritized robbing state coffers at the expense of funding um, basic services. Um, like Tony, I had to take 16 days off without pay uh, because the university says it has a budget deficit. Many of my union sisters and brothers are eligible for food stamps. Meanwhile, the Board of Regents continues to profit off of their appointed positions. Governor Schwarzenegger, who gets to appoint the regents, uh, his business partner is, no, is now a regent, and his business partner has ensured that over $330 million of public money has been invested in a company that the governor is a major stockholder in. Public education is supposed to be affordable. Well, frankly, I think it's supposed to be free, but... Uh, <laughs> However, for graduating law students, they can expect an average debt of $90,000. Tony's already talked about the fee increases just this year in loan at UC, but over the past decade, it's gone up 300%. You, undergraduates expect to be in the hole before uh, securing their first job, and that's if they can find one. This increase has prevented many students from returning to finish their degrees, and the hardest hit are working class students of color. Some of the signs we saw were saying, you see $10,000, which is what they were basically raising the fees to. Um, we see basically, you know, we're out of school. This is only a snapshot of the effects of UC's attempt to privatize and union bust. UC is a trendsetter. Before Prop 209, which eliminated affirmative action in California, it was the UC regents who came forth under Ward Connolly and basically said, we don't want to have affirmative action at UC, and that passed. So what we do at UC does make a difference. Um, Tony's already talked about some of the other horrible things that are happening. Um, Bob works at City College, and summer school got canceled just on a dime. Um, other things are happening. I'm trying to shorten this here. Um, but the other point is, let's get to the good stuff, which is people are fighting back. University of Puerto Rico uh, students basically had a very impressive major victory and a long, hard-fought victory, which gives inspiration to us. Um, people throughout the world are standing up against privatization of, of uh, public education. Um, comrades in other branches are also been participating, so this is beginning to, we're seeing a nationwide movement being born, which is really exciting. Um, last summer, a little bit before this time, um, a few of us leftists at UC Berkeley got together and formed the Student Worker Action Team, um, otherwise known as SWAT. And Basically, our job was to, we felt it was very important to make the connections to the proposed um, fee hikes that were, the regions were proposing and the attacks on the layoffs and furloughs that were going to be um, imposed. We connected from the beginning the issues of workers and students, which I think is really important, and then how the cuts negatively impacted women and people of color the hardest because we were one of the first groups um, organized around the fee hikes and budget cuts at Berkeley, and also probably throughout the UC system, we were able to set the political framework for the ensuing fight. Once school started, SWAT, along with the faculty and student coalitions, worked together to build for a September 24th student workout. This call was strengthened by my local union voting to strike because we were in contract negotiations and a thousand faculty throughout the UC system signing a petition protesting the proposed austerity measures. Our call in the FSP was to chop from the top by having the top executives return the $320 million they had received in the previous year as bonuses to help offset the $400 million uh, budget gap that the state uh, had left us. It was kind of hard to say, you know, what, at 6 a.m. on a picket line, what, what the day was going to end up looking like. 
Um, But however, by noon, as we marched back onto campus, we were overwhelmed at how many people had come out for the rally. Sproul Plaza was overflowing in the biggest demonstration since the free speech movement. The steps of the administration building were packed with protesters and signs proclaiming, whose university? Our university. And the crowd kept filing in, chanting, no cuts, no fees, education must be free. Let's hear it. No cuts, no fees, education must be free. Woo! (laughs) And on the heels of that exhilarating day, basically a lot of solidarity, incredible solidarity uh, between workers, students, and faculty, a statewide conference was called out of that. And out of that statewide conference, which we attended, there was over 1,000 people and a March 4th day of action, which many of us participated, basically was kind of probably the primary decision that came out of that conference. Well, it's nice that we had to figure out how do you build upon a success of, of, of the September 24th strike and, um, and uh, student walkouts. Um, the UC Regents were, had proposed these fee hikes, so the next action was basically to try and figure out, okay, we need to put pressure on the Regents to let them know that um, you know, it's unacceptable what they were proposing to do. At my union's convention, which happened prior to the uh, regents' meeting in November, myself and other members uh, passed a resolution calling for a strike at Berkeley and also at UCLA where the regents were going to be meeting as a way to support the students, as a way to also gain um, support for our stalled contract negotiations. It was also around this time that the law students said, hey, we want to we wanna do something. We kind of didn't do anything because we were on break in, in September, but we want to do stuff. So they contacted Tony and myself because we had, um, because we worked there and because we also had a, a history of um, people knowing who we were as activists, as unionists, as FSP, and as, as RW. So we helped form the Berkeley Law Organizing Committee, and which successfully basically was able to get the majority of law school classes either moved, canceled, or rescheduled on the days of the, um, the November strikes. So that was really, uh, really exhilarating. <laughs> And it was really exciting to be walking through the halls and hearing people debating, discussing, well, do we walk out? What's the picket line? What do we do? Why should we do it and stuff? But again, it, the, the law school pretty much was shut down that day. Um, other things that we also ended up doing, and this isn't even a complete list, I just want to give people kind of little highlights, is um, the SWAT ended up uh, creating a workers caucus because when the students came back the students were kind of outnumbering the workers and we felt we needed to have a separate voice so it was important for us to have a caucus. One of the things that also came out of that was we wanted to do a town hall which featured workers and how they were workers on campus and how they were being impacted by these proposed cuts. So Tony was um, was the facilitator for that really um, dynamic and important uh, town hall of which how many people showed up? Three or four hundred people came. And, you know, to be able to, for everybody to hear what, what was the actual price that was going to have to be paid in people's lives, I think was really important. Again, helped educate students as well as other workers that, you know what, um, this stuff is really bad, and the other thing is but people are fighting back. And I think that's the important theme we have going through is people are fighting back. Um, we also had a campus radical, took the opportunity to have a campus radical woman meeting also on the topic and organized with one of the law school student organizations jointly for a panel where we had uh, Tony's union lawyer come because he was their lawyers, right? So they have to have a lawyer come to make it legitimate. Um, they also had a student who talked about actually educating about picket lines, why we should not cross a picket line. And then I was also able to speak to talk about, you know, just the struggle in general and, and you know, going beyond just occupations. Thank you. Okay. Uh, All right. Yeah, I think they said. Okay. Not yet. Uh, All right. So anyway, there was a variety of different events. From the, one of the other things I think it's, it's important to mention in the sense that it's, it was part of the debate around what do we do next is in November after the regents passed the, um, the fee hikes, uh, students took over a building. And 
uh, the people who took over a building tended to were more and more anarchists, and they were saying, well, we have no demands. Because if we have demands, then we're saying that the university could actually meet those demands. So it was kind of like, huh? Anyway, but what ended up happening when the press came, because there was a lot of press, uh, they were saying, well, what are your demands? So they had to come up with some demands, which that was helpful to the rest of us who were standing outside supporting, we're supposed to be supporting them, but we don't quite know what we're supporting. But the important thing is that they did include demands that dealt with workers, which was to rehire the custodians. And I think, that, again, that's significant in that, again, where is our program and, and how were we able to impact and influence um, the movement? So the fact that you know, the people who wanted known demands included some around workers, again, was very important. Um, some of the things that we, there was also then the March 4th Day of Action, which people in, in other branches, like New York participated, Muffy's going to talk about LA, um, excuse me, Seattle comrades, um, Portland, um, it's exciting. Um, so there was, it was, that was more of a, uh, an effort to connect not just university, but public, you know, K through 12 schools, um, community colleges, the state universities to say, you know what, this is all, we're all in this together. So again, that was really um, very dynamic and exciting. Um, and uh, it was great to see the support from parents. The shopkeepers, when we walked down from, down to, from downtown Berkeley to downtown Oakland, just literally lining the streets and, and watching and, and, and supporting, because again, the understanding that the general public knows about um, you know, the need to fight back against these cuts. Um, some of the things that we learned, because again, this is a very, it's, it's a very exciting movement and there's lots of lessons to be learned. Um, we operate in a milieu of primarily Trotskyists at, in SWAT. And what we realized is that um, it's kind of nice to work with other leftists in the sense that they talk about, you know, more radical issues. But what we realized is we can't just say, oh, okay, you know, we agree with that, but just to really to continue to push the envelopes, right? And especially about pushing and distinguishing ourselves from them, which would make us, what distinguishes us is that we are socialist and we're socialist feminists. We're not just socialist. And that um, to talk about the connections between the attacks on, on um, queer, queers, women, and people of color. So to, to basically, you know, say everything is connected. Um, I think the other thing that we missed out on some was engaging in the political debates that were going on on the listservs. So I think that that is an important way for us to get our voice and our ideas out that can be, again, distributed further than, than ourselves. Um, I think the other thing that we learned is that you can run around to 50 bazillion meetings a week because that's what was happening, but you know what? Running around doesn't help you at all. Um, what we needed to do more of, and we were getting better towards uh, the end of the semester, was focus. What is it we're trying to do? And to be clear on what were what our priorities were, and what we realized was that it was important to be spend quality time with individuals who we thought are potential recruits and people we wanted to work with. So we spent a lot of um, time with the law students who ended up forming another group called We Are Public Education, and those were primarily women of color who actually were community activists. So. Um, I think that that was, again, um, a more efficient and fruitful usage of our time. Uh, we were also able to have our local uh, labor fraction help us out tremendously in, in that, you know, Tony and I, you know, you're, you're immersed in it, so to have other comrades um, help us out by saying, hey, what about this, what about that? I think the other thing we learned is that we need to figure out better ways to get the branch involved so it's not just the fraction kind of doing everything or a lot of the stuff um, and doing a better job of incorporating uh, uh, branch members. Um, I just wanted to end by saying that our success, I think, um, at UC Berkeley has come from the work that we have done over the years and that people know us and they respect us. Um, it's interesting, my, at my workplace just recently, they decided that they wanted to take away our IT person and move him upstairs. So what I was able to do is to get my coworkers to all sign a letter and basically saying we don't like this and we gave it to the law school's chief of staff. Yeah, that's what she's called, the chief of staff. And saying we want to have a meeting because we don't think that's right. Um, workers and students want to fight and they are ready to fight and it's our responsibility to provide the militant and radical leadership that is needed to take on the state 
and the future of public education depends on it. And I'm hoping that this hat, I get to wear some more, but I get to wear it along with other unions who are also going to be on strike so that we can help win uh, public education.